Oh, Paula, I... I want to cut into this bag of garlic as bad as you do, I know, but we gotta save it. Just one? Well, I suppose there couldn't be harm in grabbing just one head. No! No, Paula, no! We don't need it. We have to save this garlic for a future episode. Yes, all of it. For one episode. You'll have to wait your turn, Paul. We'll just use some minced garlic, pre-minced, as much as I love fresh garlic. Yeah, this stuff will do for today. By the way, in case you're wondering, we're making empanadas. It's Some Guy Who Could, starring Brett Picorni. Featuring Brett Picorni, guest stars on the show include Sal, Pappy, and the lovely Paula. Today's episode brought to you by Brett Picorni. Now, I'm a huge fan of Spanish cuisine, Latin and otherwise. So naturally, I love empanadas. First things first, I'm gonna show you my meat. We got some ground beef here, about a pound of it. I got this just at Walmart. It's your cheapo giant 10 pound tube of beef, which yes, yeah, not the highest quality ground beef, but it's still good. It still gets the job done. So, bloop. And next up, I've got a little over a pound of Mexican chorizo that I picked up from La Aurora, my favorite Hispanic market here in Gainesville. Ooh, I do love chorizo. And bloop. Didn't bloop. And bloop. Now the chorizo is very well seasoned, so it really doesn't need anything added, but we've also got that ground beef. So I will be adding a few things. First up, some salt. Next, we got black pepper. Some accent, because who doesn't love that stuff? Next up, chili powder. Lots of chili powder. Nice big helping of paprika. Just a dash of cinnamon. Maybe two. Ooh, almost out of cayenne. Well, I only need a dash or two of that anyway. And of course, I'll put some cumin. Now, I've also got these chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. I love chipotle, so I'm gonna add a few of these bad boys. <laughs> oh my goodness, that smells amazing. Now, in case you didn't know, chipotles are actually smoked jalapeno peppers. And boy, are they delicious. So I'm gonna pull a couple of these guys out, get them in there, and then I'm gonna just break them up with my hands. And the rest I'm gonna use on another recipe later. Yeah, look at these. Oh, they are beautiful. Like I said, break those up on in there. I'm gonna put the most of those seeds to the side, because I know that's a, a lot of spice right there. All right, obviously my hands are a mess, and normally this would be the point where I go wash them, but they're covered in chipotle smoky goodness and jalapeno seeds, but I want all of this delicious flavor in the meat, so I'm just gonna dive in, okay? Look at that. Well, that mixed well. Look at this nice, Big ball of meat. Isn't it a beautiful thing? Bloop. Now, some people add raisins to empanadas. I don't have any raisins. I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm against them being in empanadas. I just didn't buy any. Although, give me a sec. These are oil cured olives and something tells me they will be absolutely delightful in these. They've got a, a similar consistency to a raisin, plus a nice olive cured kind of salty flavor. Yeah, I'm gonna add a few of these to the mix. Now, for a warning, they do have pits, so I'm gonna have to just kind of peel and pinch and, and drop in as I go, because I do not want one of these getting in the mix. Boop. Oh, no, don't, don't go in there. I don't want you in there. All right, all the little bits of olive. Now we'll get those in there. This is just a beautiful hunk of meat here, and I look forward to cooking it so much. I also just really like doing this. All right, now we get to the fun part. This is the actual cooking, guys. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here, but not a ton, just a little bit, because I don't want those onions to stick. However, there's gonna be a ton of oil in that ground beef and that chorizo, so I don't want to overdo it. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy cranked up. Unfortunately, it does not go up to 11. We got our little drizzle of olive oil in here. I'll just spread it around a bit. And then I'm gonna toss in these onions. I wanna start the onions before the garlic because, you know, garlic burns a lot faster than onions. And bloop. 
<laughs> yeah, that's fun. I am so surprised I didn't spill any. And now I guess we just sit here until they start to sizzle. All right, I'm starting to hear these onions sizzle. They're starting to sweat. Now I also have a handful here of fresh jalapeno. I just diced this stuff. Keep in mind, if you put it in your hand like this, just don't touch anything important later, i.e. your eyes are... I've done it before. But anyway, like I said, these onions are starting to sweat, so we're gonna pop in those diced jalapenos as well. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna add in some of this garlic. A nice big heaping spoonful, because I like garlic. And just keep it moving, guys. Something else I forgot to mention that I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add right now a little bit of mustard seed. Uh, you don't have to, and I know this isn't like traditional for a lot of Spanish dishes, but I really love what it does. It gives you a little bit of extra bitterness, a little bit of extra spice, plus when they plump up, they give you a nice little, little mini bite. All right, the onions and the garlic and the pepper here have all gotten nice and soft, still that translucent, but they haven't caramelized yet, but this is where we want them to be right now. I'm gonna throw in the meat, and while that cooks, these will all caramelize just a little bit more. I'm gonna do this like one poop at a time. Boop. Let's get this all mixed around. And another bloop. And another bloop. You just kinda wanna press the onions and the meat around a bunch here, get them all pretty well mixed. That way they can kinda cook together. Oh, by the way, we got one more big ol' bloop. Let's get this all mixed in. Guys, tell me this doesn't look amazing so far. All right, so while you weren't looking, I put a lid on it. This really helped to trap a lot of that heat in there so we could cook it a little more evenly and also just cook it a little faster. And mixing around, look how beautiful that is. That just, it's gorgeous and it, oh, it smells amazing in here. You have no idea. You just, you gotta do it yourself. Now one key thing you wanna do is taste it. You can't know how something's gonna taste unless you taste it. So I'm gonna grab a little piece of the meat here. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So good. Mmm. Big kick of spice on the back end. But so, so good. Personally, I love spice, so I'm okay with it. How amazing does this look? It's almost ready. There's just one more thing I'm going to add. But before I do, I wanted to comment. You saw me reach in here with my fingers to taste it. Naturally, we're going through quarantine and all that stuff. If you're feeding other people, don't do that. Just get yourself a little spoon, get yourself a couple spoons. Tasting spoons are something they use in kitchens all around the world, and why can't you? Because you can. But for me, because I'm just cooking for me, I mean, <laughs> I got no problem with this. Mmm. I'm gonna grab another piece there. That's really, mmm, really good. But, like I said, got one more ingredient. I know what you're thinking. Brett, what are you doing? What are you doing? Cream cheese? But trust me, I've done this. No, I haven't done this before, but I want to do it now because I think it's gonna be amazing. So here we go. Our last bloop of the day. Bloop. Oh, I almost missed. I have missed, but luckily most of it got in there and none of it fell out. But here we go. Just gonna break it up, stir it in. Mm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this does. Look at that, already the beef. Mm-hmm. It's taking on that creaminess. And if you're shouting sacrilege, don't knock it till you try it. I really hope this turns out awesome. Look at that. Remember, if you're cooking for others, don't try this at home. Mmm. Oh man. Woo! I have half a mind to add another stick of cream cheese. I won't, but. I'm tempted. All right, guys, I'm turning off this heat because this stuff is ready. Oh, how can I feed the black beans? All right, let's bring this back over here. And here we go. The one that got away, just one little bean left over in there. Oh yeah, and we'll give that one more little taste. Mmm, mmm, perfect, perfect, so good. All right, so here we've got our filling, little cup of water, and we've got our empanada shells. 
it can be a bit of a pain getting them to come apart. But once you do, dip your finger in some water, go ahead and rub around the edge of that empanada shell. And then we're gonna get a good scoop, a nice big spoonful of our filling. And then we're gonna pull this over to the other side. And we're gonna press down here. So you can see it's a nice looking empanada there. Uh, it still has to be crimped though. Sometimes people crimp it with a fork around the edge, but I've learned another way that I'm gonna try. I don't know how successful I'll be, but let's give it a go. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. It does not look pretty at all when I try to do it that way. So I'm gonna add just a touch more water here. I'm gonna grab a fork and we're just gonna push down as we go. I'm gonna give it one more go. Let's go ahead and get a nice big scoop. And as we pull it over, there we go. Now this one, I'm not gonna try to fold like that. Just gonna pull it over here and let's give it a good crimping with the fork all around. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay guys, now it's time to fry these bad boys. Could you bake them? Sure, but let's be real. When it comes to empanadas, if you've got the option to either fry or bake, you fry them. Okay, time to dip these down. We've got one ugly one and one pretty one. Here we go. Whoop. Just gonna cover that up so we don't get any. Oh yeah, they're doing great. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a shake here. And while those are finishing up, I'm just gonna set a paper towel down on this plate so that uh, they can get a little bit of oil to come off. Ooh, those look good. All right, I'm pretty sure these guys are ready. They're nice golden color, and I'm gonna let it drain for a sec before we, here we go, toss them right onto the plate. Oh yeah, look at those, absolutely beautiful. Ooh, ha ha ha. And that is just a perfect golden fried empanadas here. And really there's only one step left, and that's to try them out. So, uh, bottoms up. Mmm, hot. But so good. Sorry for the whole full mouth thing, but it is so good. I'll take a look inside. You can see that filling. It, uh, I mean, it looks a lot like it did in the pan, but oh, now it's surrounded by a crispy yet delicate fried shell of an exterior that you can just hold in your hands. And yeah, it's really hot right now, but these are gonna make excellent snacks later when I can just grab one and go. All right, one more bite. Mmm. Mmm. The cream cheese was an excellent decision. And I've still got a little bit of the tingle on my mouth from those, uh, from those peppers, from the, the heat from those peppers, but it's really kind of mellowed out when I added the beans and, uh, and frying it up like this. It's just, they're perfect. They are absolutely perfect. It's been fun. I'm just some guy who cooks. You're still here? Oh, you guys, you do care. Well, as long as you you're still here. I hope you wouldn't mind hitting like and subscribe because both of those would help me tremendously. And if you could also, you know, share it with your friends. Spread the word, spread the word. Comment below as well. And uh, oh, don't forget to watch it again if you missed Sal and Peppy. Once I get to 100 subscribes, I'm gonna do a live video. And whoever can tell me where Sal and Peppy were in all of these videos, it's gonna win an awesome prize. Till next time, guys. Bloop! 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 Big ol' bloop!